with liberty and justice for all. I'll start out with the fun part here tonight. I have a proclamation. It's my pleasure to read. Whereas the Winona Senior High School softball team's first state tournament appearance was in 2016 with a record 22-5, finishing as the state runner-up losing to Mankato 4-3 in the state championship game. And whereas the 2017 Winona Senior High softball team went 24-3, outscoring opponents 24-2, in the final in the state tournament, defeating Thief River Falls 10 to nothing. Totino Grays 5 nothing and Hermantown 9-2 in the championship game. And whereas Katie Block, Ashton Hepner, Rian Reinardi, Justin Justine Schultz were all named all section. And whereas Ashton Hepner, Justine Schultz, and Katie Block were named first team all state. And whereas Ashton Hepner, Justine Schultz, Rian Ryan Hardy were named to the All-Star Series. And whereas the Winona Senior High School Band and Winona Community were a big part of the total team effort. And whereas Ashton Hepner was one of seven finalists for the Miss Softball Award. Now therefore I, Mayor Mark Peterson, do hereby proclaim the 17th day of July 2017 as Winhawk Girls Softball Day in the city of Winona, Minnesota. Congratulations to everybody and I'd like to present this uh, proclamation and then ask all of you to come up or uh, come up first, maybe first come up to the podium and uh, introduce yourself and just say what position you play. So if you would do that in some kind of order. <laughs> all right. Somebody's got to go first. Justine Schultz, catcher. Ashton Hepner, pitcher. Katie Block, shortstop. Lauren Hammernick, first base. Brianna Renardi, second base. Gabrielle Jacobs, first base. Sarah Halverson, outfield. Riley O. Riley Olson, catcher. Britton Winter, pitcher. Elena Lofgren, outfield. Amina Masood, outfield. Alan Gady, third base. Savannah Iverson, shortstop. Samantha Iverson, outfield. Abby Larson, team manager. Carson Johnson, second base. Jay Jaswick, uh, outfield. <laughs> and the coaches, they want to come up too. <laughs> Mitch Grussell, assistant coach. Scott Halverson, coach. Sierra Curran, freshman coach. And Amber Malinchek is also coach, and she couldn't be with us this evening. now <laughs> yep 
this and I want to mention a couple of things. There were a couple of articles about Winona in the past week that I think were uh, really important. Uh, the St. Paul Pioneer Press, or the Star Tribune, I'm sorry, had an article in their Sunday Variety paper, a uh, full page with pictures of Winona, uh, titled, In Summer, Minnesota River Town of Winona Becomes World-Class Cultural Capital. And it uh, goes on to wax eloquently about Winona and all that's going on with the arts and culture. And then Rochester Post Bulletin also had an article that, on their opinion page that was titled, Our View, Winona's Cultural Events Set Standard for Region. And again, going on about Winona and, you know, why is Winona able to do this and Rochester can't kind of article. And it was really uh, heartwarming to read that. And uh, I just want to say congratulations to everybody involved in all of these events. And, and just recognize, too, all the people that have uh, worked so hard, really, in Winona for the last uh, decade or 15 years. And uh, really to the volunteers and the corporate support and uh, the, the city staff and everybody that's uh, has, has accomplished this because it's, it's really huge. And I think the dividends are paying off now with... Uh, this kind of recognition around the state, and so uh, you can't buy this kind of publicity. And so, just uh, I want to just say congratulations. And then I also want to mention too that uh, uh, Jerry brought up uh, last meeting that uh, Sioux Street crossing and how bad that is. And I would wholeheartedly agree that is a very it's not any better, if not worse, worse. than it was before. And I also crossed the uh, the Beer Street crossing over by Westfield. If you want to go airborne, uh, go on over there, and uh, you can go airborne if you want. Um, I know the city's paying for the, the materials and the railroad does the work, but I think both of those crossings can be improved and, and better than they are, and I hope that uh, we can communicate that with the railroad. Um, that's really all I had for tonight. I'll ask the city manager if he has anything. I just take a little issue with the Star Tribune, uh, Your Honor. I think we're a year-round world-class cultural city, but I'm biased. Well, it's true. But. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, the fire chief to come up and explain our ISO 2 certification. It's uh, something that we should all be proud of as a community and certainly staff uh, for their hard work and how this is going to uh, benefit the community as a whole. And Mayor and Council, it, it, it's been in the paper, but it, I, it's nice to finally verbally inform you all that uh, Winona's public protection classification went to a two. Now, just to put a little significance on this, um, there's approximately 47,000 fire departments in the state of, or the United States. Only 1,500 hold that class two rating or higher. Um, and to bring it home a little bit more, in the state of Minnesota, there's approximately 790 fire departments. And currently, there are no ISO 1 rated uh, departments in the state, but there are two ISO 2 rated uh, cities or communities in the state, St. Paul being one and Winona being the other. So we're, uh, it's, it's quite an honor. Um, and, and just kind of to break this down a little bit, I just a uh, little bit background on the ISO. The insurance service organization does inspections on not only the fire department, but water department and the dispatch center about every six years. So we get reevaluated every six years. Um, they, they rate the department on a scale of one to ten, one being the very best, and ten more or less not having fire protection at all. So that the, the twos pretty impressive. Uh, I need to stress though, when they do this study, they, they base half the score on the fire department, half the score, or 40% on the water department, and 10% on the dispatch center. And the ISO revised their process of evaluation about four or five years ago, and they made it a little more realistic with NFPA standards and so forth. And, and, and Really, not to bore you with numbers and everything else, but in a nutshell, they they evaluate the minute someone calls 911, the minute, and, and the, the response of the fire department, and it's it's all hinged on an engine company responding within three 320 seconds to a house or a business, and then a truck company responding within 560 seconds after the initial dispatch. So. 
it, it involves the engine and staffing, the ladder company and staffing, and then ultimately us having the ability to flow water to, to suppress a fire. So it's, it's an all-encompassing fire evaluation that's done every six years. So I'm extremely uh, proud of the department. They, they worked really hard. I, I'm proud of the water department. I wish we had water department personnel here because we have a top-notch water system in the city of Winona. Uh, and a lot of that uh, is you know, based on uh, water capacity, which council has directly uh, been involved in approving reservoirs and so forth. So uh, I, my very first evaluation, I, I, I learned a lot. And uh, there's a lot of things that we can improve on. And, and that's our plan over the next six years. So I field any questions anybody may have. Congratulations. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. I had someone step in my office from the water department and uh, mentioned to me that if we did better maintenance on our hydrants, we would have got a better rating. And they nope. didn't have time to tell me what that meant, so I was going to ask you. Yeah, and, and, and it's it, water department does an excellent job on, on the maintenance of the, our, our hydrants. It it, uh, it basically boiled down to, and, and this is, you know, we have just as much responsibility in this, but it's actually doing static uh, hydrant pressures and flow tests on hydrants. And uh, I've been in uh, conversations with Brent and we're going to, we typically assist the water department flushing hydrants every year. And I think what we'll start doing just to improve our score is uh, spot checking and doing actual pedal readings on our hydrants just to get those extra points in the future. So. Because I wouldn't say when I see the hydrants, they don't look in disrepair to me, so oh, I didn't really know what they were talking have, about. They, we, they we look have good. Hands on the best day. Water permits top notch. So, That's what I thought. I mean, I think yes. they took that article a little bit hard because yeah, yeah, it seemed no, like it was saying they were doing something correct, yeah. incorrect. But yeah. I didn't. When I see them, they always look like they're maintained. So I was just curious yeah. what that was. Yeah, that's. How often is this assessment done? About every six years. Okay. So uh, we we should have time to to get our ducks in a row, and uh, we'll see how it comes out six years from now. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. All right. yep. <clears throat> Anything else? That's all. Thank you. Uh, roll call. Mayor oh. Peterson. Here. Councilman Thurley. Here. Craig. Here. Alexander. Here. Iden. Here. Borzikowski. Here. Schulmeyer. Here. <clears throat> Under the petitions, requests, and communications, item 3.1 is a request for the walk to end Alzheimer's street closure request for September 23rd. I'd move to approve that street closure. Second. Motion by Pam, seconded by Michelle. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. Item 3.2 is a signed request for the Edge Church for a banner for their live nativity. The banner would be posted November 20th through December 4th. Move to approve that request. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by George. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Carries. Item 3.3 .3 is a reappointment to the Heritage <coughs> Preservation Commission of Preston Loing. Move to approve that request. Second. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by Paul. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 3.4 is a request from the Main Street Program for the Big Muddy Brew and Q event on September 2nd and 3rd. Move to approve that request. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by Jerry, and I see uh, our uh, Main Street Director, Emily, is here. You want to say a few words? Uh, this is the second annual Big Money Brewing Q, and as many of you know, it was an overwhelming success last year with triple the crowds that we had anticipated. Um, this year, slightly altered location due to the construction happening in Levy Park. Uh, but still happening in downtown, in Levy Park, on the Mississippi River. And it's a, sort of a day and a half event this yes, year? Yes, we did. So we were able to grow with such a success that first year. Uh, we added a Saturday evening event, um, really not wanting to grow to two full days quite yet. That's still a bit of a, a lofty leap from where we're starting. Um, so Saturday evening is only from 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock, um, and then we'll shut down and open back up again at noon the next morning and go till 9 p.m. on Sunday. And the dates? Uh, September 2nd and 3rd is the, the Labor Day weekend 
dates this year. So we'll be done Sunday night, tore down Monday, back open for business downtown on Tuesday morning. Anybody have any questions for Emily, George? Yeah, Monday will be a good recuperation day then. After the teardown, yeah. <laughs> come, you can come help and then okay. it'll be done faster. <laughs> I just want to tell everybody that uh, back by popular demand, Winona's own Smokehouse Garage will be there competing once again. All right. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, oh yes. yes. Last year his crew helped me move heavy items. So. Oh, great. This year it's been a fee, but <laughs> <laughs> no, they were happy to help. They it, were it's, great. It was a, you guys did an amazing job last year, so everybody's looking forward to it this year. Yeah, so are we. Yep, boom. Uh, just uh, note exhibit A, number three, the dates are wrong, September, says September 4th. <coughs> That's all. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Well, well, Mr. Mayor, I believe you're in charge of weather that day. Only if it turns out well. <laughs> then I take full credit for it. <laughs> but I'll do my best. All right, well, thank you very much. We look forward to another great event. Uh, I think we're ready to vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Passes. Item 3.5 is a temporary wine and malt liquor license for the Main Street Program uh, Brew and Q on September 2nd and 3rd. Move mm -hmm. to approve that request. Second. Second. Third. <laughs> <laughs> Motion by Michelle, seconded by Jerry. I suppose we should pass this as well. Uh, any comments or questions? If not, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 3.6 is a request for a color dash 5K to be held on Saturday, September 30th. Move to approve that request. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by George. Any discussion? Um, introduce Sorry. yourself. Uh, I'm Jordan Lukey. I'm the chief coordinator for the event. Uh, this will be our third annual. Rescheduling. We also have Midwest Music Fest, a great competitor. So we are now the only difference is September 30th of 2017. I thought we had approved this not yeah. long ago, so I was yeah, no, yeah. glad to hear the explanation. And if you guys have any questions, I'll think Al, you have yeah. Uh, you know, we just dedicated our new dog park in that vicinity by the Kiwana Shelter. Um, are you cognizant of that, and will the dog park still be open for people to use that? Yep, they shouldn't have any blockage as well as for the, man, uh, the landing motor should still be able to go. Okay. Okay. Anything else? We'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Thank you. Under unfinished business item 4.1 is to award the contract for the Prairie Island Campground Electrical Upgrades to Bauer Electrotech with a bid of $152,935. Oh, I had a tax resolution. I think I had a motion by Paul and a second from Michelle. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <coughs> Carries. Under new business, item 5.1 is the transit grant application for 2018. The grant will provide approximately 80% of our gross operating costs. Move to adopt the attached resolution. Second that. Motion by Michelle, seconded by Pam. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 3.2 is the certification of completion, final estimate, and resolution of acceptance for the Bud King Ice Arena Bid Package 3 Dasher System Improvements. Make a motion to approve the attached resolution. Second. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by George. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Hold, same sign. Carries. Item 5.3 is the Masonic Temple Masonry Project Documents and Grants Application. I make a motion to approve the attached resolution. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by Paul. Uh, you want to, Chad, you want to say a few words about this? For our vast audience out there. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, when the Council approved the bonding for uh, the Masonic Temple in the amount of $1.8 million, we have provided the Council, and it's in your packet as well, a spreadsheet of, of 
sort of the schedule and project, you know, priority list for uh, the Masonic Temple after the decisions were made, again, about rigging system, drops, etc. The granting cycle, however, with Minnesota Historical Society does allow us to apply this year for masonry work that could be then completed in 18, so a year ahead of what we had planned. Uh, we think we have a good uh, shot at that grant, and because we have bonding dollars, a contingency within the bonding dollars that you approved, we feel it's important that we try and capture those funding dollars this granting cycle for 18 opposed to applying in 18 for granting dollars in 19. And so that's generally what is happening with this council request, both the ability to provide the documents needed for the application as well as an approving staff to go out and apply for this grant through the MHS. Any questions for Chad? Just so that we're just moving uh, our timeline up. This really doesn't change any of the work. It's not new. It's just uh, moving the timeline. The work is not new. All that correct. All, all that's all that's coming really uh, forward. This item is to move the timeline up with the with the Masson Temple building improvements. So the masonry work is the same as it as we've discussed in, in previous meetings. It's detailed and outlined in the HSR that was done in 2014. So no changes to building component structures. This is just simply to move the timeline up one year to apply for the grant. Al, yeah, do you have a question? Yeah, I do. Uh, by authorizing this uh, scope of work form and everything, does this then set us up for additional grants that you're aware of? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, the MHS, I think, is really the one that comes to mind mm -hmm. the most. I mean, we certainly have researched other grants. Um, nothing that really is coming to the top of my mind as it relates to historical structures. I mean, I think MHS is the is the granting source that yeah. we would pursue. Well, obviously, that's the first one. But if there's anything else out there, certainly by doing this, we cover a multiple. Uh, level, perhaps, oh. of potential sources of yeah, additional mayor funding. And yes, Mayor and Council, certainly. I mean, having these, the scope of work form and the construction documents puts us that much further ahead if other grants have become available. Certainly, this is work that we feel needs to be done to the building. And again, mm -hmm. if you stand in the corner of 5th and Main and look up, you see the work that yeah. needs to be Perfect. done. Yeah. Um, it was listed as a high priority in the HSR, so this is not, you know, to to certainly use a term, this is not wasted work. These are documents right. that we would need in the future with this building uh, regardless. Good, thank you. Chad, I have a question. If I saw in the uh, Prairie Island campground, that estimate was, uh, the bid was twenty-two dollars or $23,000 under the estimate. Mm -hmm. Now that's part of the same bonding money. Would that money that wasn't spent be spent on something else at Prairie Island, or could that money be used if needed for this? project uh, mayor and council the the first look we would do is to use those dollars that again because it came under under budget we would use those dollars first for items within prairie island so we still need to do the water upgrade project and we still need to get quotes for that if that would come under budget then the first priority would be toward an, a, a project at prairie island um, if not Prairie Island, then it comes back to council because it is excess money within the bond. And then we would um, come back with an item to council to approve those dollars to go within any of the other bond projects. So it could go toward Levy Park, it could go toward Masonic Temple, it could go toward Fourth Ward Park, the tennis upgrades at Not Valley, Valley Oaks, or the Boathouse Restaurant Project within Levy Park. So any one of the projects then within the bond item could be used. Those excess dollars could be used for one of those projects or it could be used as a way to pay back the loan. So. Thank you. George? Uh, Chad, now hopefully, you know, successfully, you know, we get these grants, but by accepting these grants is that putting any stipulations on what we can do with the future of the building? Uh, Mayor and Council, the grant does come with stipulations. Um, 
the one that's most notable is once we accept grant money, which we actually already have for the HSR, then we are subject to SHPO review on relatively all the projects we do at the Masonic Temple. There would be some aesthetic things like, you know, some upgrades to painting hallways, for example, that wouldn't need SHPO review, but the major projects um, then would require SHPO review because we did receive this state funding. Now, and again, we would want to do that anyway because it's on the National Register. We would, we would do that anyway because it's on the National Register, and we, would, we are now required because we have received um, grant money for electrical upgrades on the building, and we've received grant money for the HSR. And so we're already in that, you know, we're within that um, framework already. But certainly this would continue to, you know, trigger those reviews. Anything else? We are ready to vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 5.4, some in-dot request for a joint powers agreement. Make a motion to approve the attached resolution. Second. Motion by Michelle and seconded by George. Discussion? Paul? Uh, so I'm wondering, uh, this is, uh, is this the final plan for the crossing? No. No. It's just a, it's a, it's sort of like a, um, a corridor study. This is a this is one of the proposals. Um, we still have to go through parks. We want them um, to look at it as well. But all we're asking for is the council to agree to the joint powers agreement with MnDOT, which basically uh, will allow us to go through expend funds on the planning side, and then we will be reimbursed by MnDOT for the cost of doing the engineering. All of those engineering studies will be brought back to the council. Um, for your input as well. Would the Act and Transport Committee or the, the, those groups be able to uh, look at this and offer mm -hmm. their input so that uh, uh, some of the users who cross there frequently can... Certainly. There was a letter to the editor recently and I've had a couple of people contact me about the turn lane uh, yeah. off in uh, 61. I would hope maybe they could take a look at that as well. Uh, so there was an accident there, I think, and somebody, uh, I think it's generally assumed it's a turn lane, but it's not, or something like that. Basically what's happening is because they're going to switch out the lights, we can expand that project a little further to include a safer pedestrian and, and bike way through yeah. and cross the it's definitely needed road there. Yeah. Good. And we certainly we want to be able to do this and replicate it at other key points along 61 as well. Okay. When would this work be done? Do you think in 18? The planning will be done in 18, or I'm sorry, the planning will be done starting, I think, immediately, and then the construction will be proposed for 18. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A couple of points. Um, any? I'm assuming if it's a MnDOT project, there will be opportunity for public input during Correct. the course of there. Okay. And also, I assume that the planning will include uh, traffic preemption devices on the new signals, which probably would benefit. I'm seeing a nod there from my fire yes. chief. Good. Uh, and then there's, there's also a, a, an odd intersection there at uh, Lake, uh, West Lake Boulevard and Huff Street. Mm -hmm. You have one side, the east side is a yield sign. And the other side to the west of that is a stop sign. I'd like to have MnDOT kind of look at that and see if there's a better way to move traffic through there. I know the yield sign is there so people coming from, say, Windcrest in that area can make an immediate uh, right turn onto Huff Street to access the intersection and go through it. But I think it's a little confusing as to what that yield sign means to traffic, and especially when people have stopped successfully going east to turn left onto Huff Street. It's a complicated thing. Uh, I know part of it involves the county process because part of it, I think, is a county road. So, uh, you know, all that stuff to keep in mind going forward with this project. But I agree that we should go ahead and apply for it. And MnDOT will, uh, I'm sure, let us know what their process is going forward. Okay. Is that parking lot there, uh, right by the intersection he was talking about, is that city? 
don't know. I, yes. I, yes. I always assumed it was. I did too. I just wanted just it wondered because it's just kind of that happened. gravel, little gravel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. works. It's well used. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was an overgrown park there. Mm -hmm. It's just above the road. Any other th anything else, George? Well, I think it's a good project, right. and uh, right. you know, as soon as we get going on it, uh, better we'll make an intersection. So there are some hiccups, as Al mentioned, but uh, we'll work them out. Okay. I think we're ready to vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item seven point one is council concerns. All right. Uh, we'll start with Pam. Nothing from Pam. Paul? Uh, congratulations, uh, Fire Department. And I, I, there are, I think the, the articles that we're seeing in the paper <coughs> just goes to show that uh, we're committed to uh, having a desirable community for people to move to with a higher quality of life. And uh, Rochester has their destination medical center, and we have our destination arts center. And people are recognizing that, so good work to all those involved. George? Okay, thank you. Uh, could staff give council an update on these WSU tunnels? I know they're not our tunnels, but the water coming out of them uh, ends up being in our lake. Just give us an update as to uh, where these tunnels are at, uh, what the status of these tunnels are. So and what the plan is to go forth with them. And also, I would just like to wish my granddaughter a very happy 18th birthday today on the 17th of July. So, happy birthday to April Banneke. Thank you. Okay. Michelle? Um, yes, there's a stoplight at the hospital across from Target, and you get into it and you want to make a left-hand turn, but it never gives you a left-hand turn. I mean, ever. And so then it causes people to back up, zip over and take left right-hand turns out of there, or just take the left-hand turn illegally. And I don't know if it's not supposed to have a left-hand turn signal, it shouldn't have a left arrow that's red, but the cars coming the other way all get to turn. Mm. So it's frustrating. I've noticed that myself, but I just kind of, I just move on with my life and left. But I mean, From the hospital yeah, left in, on to Mankato. Yes. yes. Okay. And if, but people have been stopping in my office recently and bringing it up. So I know I'm not the only one that experienced it. I thought I just hit it on a bad day or something, but I tend to now avoid that stoplight. But you should be able to go straight across and take a left-hand turn and you can't. Well, typically. Them in that. Yes, please ask them to fix that. Otherwise, that's all I have. Jerry. Pass. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, reading, I think it was the League uh, publication today, actually got it today, and there is going to be an event um, in St. Paul. It's a grand opening celebration, August 11th through the 13th, for the Minnesota State Capitol. And the state wants cities to be involved with the event, asking them to pass a resolution encouraging residents to attend, uh, make a 15-second video about what the capital means to their city, attend the March of Mayors the morning of August 11th, and there's a website, so um, I'll pass this article along to uh, staff. Is this St. Cloud? No, St. Paul. Uh, St. Paul. The March of Mayors. Why was this being St. Cloud? Did I say St. Cloud? I don't no, know. No, no, you said St. Cloud. I heard it wrong. You said the capital. Where? But anyway, I'm, I'm going to pass the article along and see if we can't get something going on this, at least the... Uh, Resolution or, or uh, some involvement from the owner's perspective. <laughs> That's all I have here. Well, it's better than the Winter Carnival March of May. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot warmer, I think, yeah. uh, in August. Yeah. State snowball fight. And moving on to the consent agenda, there are three items approval of the minutes from July 3rd, the final adoption of an ordinance for handicap parking at 207 North Baker and an ordinance to amend the ordinance for stormwater utility fees. Move to approve the consent Second. agenda. Second. Motion by Al, seconded by Michelle. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Mayor, I move we adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. Yeah. Who got it on the nose? No, I got 710. Well, didn't 702? 702. Oh.